We're monitoring the situation here where Milwaukee police are supposed to give you a news conference. About five-year-old Layla Peterson, who was shot and killed last night. Let's listen in live. It looks like they're taking the podium yeah, right now. Come back. Come back. Here a little bit. Thanks. Hello. Uh, last night, Chief Flynn presented some initial information to members of the media, members of the community, regarding a heinous crime that occurred here at about 6 o'clock. A five-year-old girl was shot, causing her death in a senseless act of violence. The chief has asked me and the people with me here today to come out and provide you with an update as much as we have. Uh, with me today, we have the resident agent in charge of the Milwaukee field office of the ATF, George Lauder. I have one of my lieutenants, Paul Cavanaugh, Captain David Salazar, Captain Jutiki Jackson, who commands the 7th Police District, which is where this um, home is located. Detective Tim Graham, he works with me in homicide and my boss, Inspector Carrie Ann Yerkes. As you all, are, I'm sure, are well aware, a five-year-old was shot to death last night, senselessly. Her name, as was put out earlier this morning, is Layla Peterson, a five-year-old, born September 23rd of 09. Our agency is vigorously following up on leads that are coming in. We are processing evidence that we recovered at the scene last night and we're talking to the witnesses that have made themselves available to us or that we have located as of this point. Quite frankly, at this point, we're befuddled as to motive for this crime. Normally, when we respond to shootings of individuals, in most circumstances, that victim is the intended target of that shooting. In this case, at this point, we believe that this bullet read to whom it may concern. And that concerns all of us, and it should concern everybody in our community. Agent Lauder of the ATF and his agency has put up a $5,000 reward for information leading to the arrest and conviction of the person or persons that are responsible for this crime. He'll talk about that more in a moment. I would like to give you the phone number that will be used for this. It is 414-935-7360. Now that phone number comes directly to investigators with the Milwaukee Police Department. It'll be funneled to my lieutenants in my division and they will in turn give it to detectives and they will follow each and every tip through to completion. We implore the community to help us in solving this crime. Um, a lot of times we're able to solve crimes without a heck of a lot of help. But in this case, we're asking for everybody's help. If you see, saw something, say something. If you hear something, say something. And I'll turn it over to Agent Lauder right now. Good morning, everybody. Uh, men and women of ATF, like our colleagues at the Milwaukee Police Department and members of this community, are profoundly saddened by this unprovoked and senseless act of violence perpetrated against a five-year-old girl. As such, ATF is providing up to $5,000 in rewards leading to the arrest and conviction of those responsible for this act of violence. And as Captain Rabb mentioned, we implore the public to come forward with information, call the Milwaukee Police Department, or you can call ATF at the toll-free number 1-800-ATF-GUNS. Thank you. I want to bring up one more thing to bring this back around. This isn't a singular incident. Uh, sadly, we've seen in other, not, not so long ago times in our city and other cities, young people being gunned down senselessly, having nothing to do with anything that caused the crime. Um, just two days ago in Racine, Wisconsin, a four-year-old was shot, and that child uh, currently stands in critical condition at a hospital, presumably in the Racine area. Uh, this past May, here in Milwaukee, Sierra Guyton was gunned down by, you know, just a criminal, that's all I can say, a criminal who had no care or concern for anybody around him, much less for that of a child. Thankfully, just as recently as yesterday, that criminal uh, was convicted of his, for his crime. And um, it's what we're looking to achieve here, too, with, with this case. One other thing I wanted to share with you, and it's actually rather surreal, after we got word that the jury had come back on the Sierra Guyton case yesterday uh, with a guilty verdict in just, I think, a scant 20 minutes, my detectives and lieutenant told me about it. 
my boss and I spoke about it and I put out a short roll call memo or a memorandum thanking our people for all the hard work, their experience, their care in that case that led to the, the, the successful arrest and uh, investigation and prosecution and conviction of the suspect in that case. Well, Sylvester Lewis was the suspect in that case and he is sitting in jail, presumably for the rest of his life. And then, less than eight hours later, this occurs. So, you know, it was kind of unusual, it was surreal that my people are now hearing my thank you roll call memo, which I put here with a picture of the girl so they could remember what they worked on and the playground she was shot, shot on. And now this one occurs. So we're asking the community, we're asking everybody to help us out with this, get this solved up. It's a small consolation that we can provide for her and for her family, her friends, and people like that. The final thing I want to mention is this family deserves some peace. They deserve a little uh, break. And what I'm asking is that the media direct all of their further questions and things like that to me, to the Milwaukee Police Department, to my investigators, and maybe just give this neighborhood a little break for, for a moment. I would really appreciate that. I can entertain a couple of questions. I don't know how far I can go with them. Yeah, can you talk about the gun or guns you're looking for, the types of weapons perhaps somebody in the community has knows of these weapons? Well, there, there, is one or more there are one or more guns involved. Um, I'm not going to get into the details of those guns yet, just in case um, you know the suspect or suspects out there hear this and decide they want to do something with it. Um, handguns, that's the best I can tell you. Do you know how many people you're looking for? One or more. Do you know why this house? No, and that's what I talked about earlier. Motive is, is the thing that's befuddling us at this point. Uh, oftentimes we'll come across later in the investigation what laid behind it, no matter how stupid, no matter how serious. On rare occasions, we never ever are able to determine motive, but that's relatively rare. Are you looking at any surveillance video that may be, you know, down the way, from, you know, when this happened and trying to yeah, find Yeah, we did, we did a large portion of that last night. We also followed up during the daytime, which we often do at crime scenes, to see what else we might be able to find, whether it's on houses or businesses or flight paths of people on foot or by car. Uh, I'm not going to share with you what or wh what not we have discovered, but we absolutely are doing that. I'm sorry, what kind of shooting? Targeted. Well, he said it was targeted because the house itself was hit by all 12 shots that we believe were fired. As far as motive or who inside the house was targeted, we don't have that yet. We don't know. I don't know at this, at this point. Yeah, it's partially what I talked to in the beginning, that we have had some witnesses come forward and others we've located on our own. Um, and we're getting some decent cooperation already. I mean, are you asking for neighbor pain? If you thought you saw something, if you now this jogs your memory, please come to us. Or you kind of yeah, we do that routinely, and that's partially what this was for, about to see something, say something, hear something, say something. Have you have shot spotter out here? That's a good question, Nick. Uh, the shot spotter doesn't reach quite out this far. However, we are investigating uh, a shot spotter account or occurrence that may have picked a portion of this up. We're not sure how helpful that'll be. Okay, thank you, guys. Thank you. Milwaukee Police Captain Aaron Rapp wrapping up a news conference. Uh, about five minutes or so discussing some of the new details, uh, although not many, in relation to the shooting of this five-year-old girl. Yeah, Layla Peterson was shot last night and killed while sitting in her grandfather's lap on 58th and Fairmount uh, inside their home there. He, uh, Captain Rep saying that home was targeted. Twelve shots hit that home, but they don't know why. They are also offering a reward, $5,000, to information leading to an arrest and a conviction in this case. Obviously on top of this breaking news, and this is a story that will continue to develop throughout the day. We're going to take a quick break, and we'll be back with you in a moment.